Welcome back to The Mindful Hunter. I'm your host as always, Jay Nickel. And we are gonna do a 2023 update to my backcountry meal plan video that I did last year. Now food, and especially backcountry food, is one of my passions. I've studied nutrition for over 20 years, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions and kind of myths in the backcountry food area, and I'd like to clear some of those up. But before we dive in the video, I got a little bit of housekeeping. So as most of you know by now, Mindful Reviews is the online platform I have launched where I'm building a community of like-minded individuals who like to nerd out on gear and support each other in their hunting endeavors. Now, I just launched a raffle last week. I'm gonna link that video right here. So I put together the ultimate ultralight solo sleep system that includes an Argali Owyhee solo shelter with the tarp and the insert, uh, your sleeping pad of choice from Big Agnes and your quilt of choice from Enlightened Equipment. And I'm gonna work with you probably on a Zoom call to figure out which pad and which quilt would be best for your particular needs. So if you haven't seen that video, click that link, go watch that video right now. There's maybe 15 or 20 raffle tickets left. There was 100 total. They're going super fast. So if you want in on that, you need to belong to Mindful Reviews. If you're already a member, you've already got access to the raffle tickets. If you're not a member yet, go to mindful-reviews.com. If you like what I do and you want to support it, you want to see more unbiased, non-sponsored videos, and you like this kind of analytical approach to gear reviews and hunting the backcountry, join Mindful Reviews. That I'm moving towards that as like my full-time job. I'm not there yet, but I'm slowly making it thus so that I can provide even more content. Which kind of brings us to this video. I'm sitting in my gear locker right now. It's kind of completely disheveled because we're in the middle of hunting season. It is close to nine o'clock at night. I gotta go put my kid to bed in 20 minutes. But I wanted to bang out this video because it's kind of been sitting on the shelf for a couple weeks and I know everybody's gearing up for elk season and I wanted to put this video together for you guys. So. Like I said, if you want to support the content, you want to see more of it, mindful-reviews.com. All right, enough of the shameless self-promotion. Let's dig into the video. Now, a little bit of context. First of all, I put out a backcountry meal planning guide maybe a year ago now. I'm going to link it down in the description below. It's basically a short PDF that gives you a background on macronutrients, micronutrients, meal planning in general, different energy systems and how the body metabolizes food in order to create energy so that we can do what we need to do in the backcountry. And it includes, you know, seven simple rules to meal plan by, as well as two example meal plans, which are not far off from this meal I'm about to share from you, but there are some updates that I've had since that PDF. But if you have not downloaded that PDF, I highly recommend it. It really helps clarify some of the misconceptions in the meal planning world in the backcountry. For example, people keep sending me these lists of where there's like lighter foods and heavier foods. And I think some people lack a basic understanding of macronutrients. For example, there are four calories per gram in both carbohydrates and protein. So if you have 100 grams of carbohydrates and 100 grams of protein, those will weigh the exact same amount, 100 grams, and they will have the exact same caloric content, 400 calories. Now, ideally, the carbohydrates will be used for energy and the protein will be used for muscle synthesis. Now, that's not always the case. We could get into glucogenesis and a bunch of other stuff that we're not gonna get into on this video. But the only way that you can effectively change the weight of the food you are taking while optimizing the caloric densities by adding fats. So fats have nine calories per gram. So 100 grams of fat would equal 900 calories where the carbohydrates and the protein would only equal 400 calories each. So when you are building your meal plan, all you were doing is balancing those three macronutrients. Now the only other kind of caveat to that would be fiber, specifically insoluble fiber, which is normally counted as a macro. But there is so little fiber by nature in backcountry foods, and especially insoluble fiber, that I consider it a non-entity, and I don't tend to worry about it at all. But for those of you thinking that you can find like heavier and lighter foods, the only way you can make 
food heavier or lighter without adjusting the caloric content is by increasing or decreasing the fat content. Now here's the problem with that. A lot of people who are not in ketosis, who have never explored being in ketosis, think they can take a bunch of fat into the backcountry and somehow all of a sudden be super efficient at fatty acid oxidization and have the fat they need for hiking around and hunting off of fat. I hate to break it to you, but your body doesn't work like that. Unless you are already in a state of ketosis or you go into ketosis so often from other you know, dietary experiments that your body is used to switching over quickly between carbohydrates and fat as your primary fuel source, you're just gonna get out there and bonk, man. So I believe in a carbohydrate-centric backcountry meal planning system. Now, I definitely include fats, and in fact, I've come up with some really interesting ways to increase your fat content in this year's meal plan. So I definitely include fats, but my primary energy source is carbohydrates, and I even like to time fats for those times throughout the day when I'm not expecting to do a lot of activity immediately afterwards. For example, at nighttime, I love to load up on the fats. If I just got the top of a hill and I'm about to glass for the next two or three hours, I love to load up on the fats because they're gonna have time to digest and then be available for me to draw on as an energy source. Whereas if I'm stopping for a quick drink of water in the middle of the hike, I'm gonna want a carbohydrate rich energy source that I can access much quicker than fat. Anyways, even that little rant was way deeper than I intended to go on this video. If this is the kind of stuff that interests you, download the PDF that I linked in the description. It's completely free and it will get much deeper into the science of nutrition and what you should really concern yourself with when putting together a nutritional plan for the backcountry. So without further ado, I've written out all the macros and I'm gonna walk through from kind of top to bottom, this year's meal plan, and I'm gonna highlight some of the things that I'm doing differently this year. So before I get any further, this is um, one full day. I put every day in a gallon Ziploc bag like this. This weighs 750 grams, give or take a couple grams, and depending what day it is, because the, you know, the dinners and the, the lunches might weigh a bit different. And that is roughly one pound, nine, nine and a half ounces. Um, so just over a pound and a half per day. I just got back from a sheep hunt. I loaded up with 12 full days, including all the bags and the two dry bags. I was under 24 pounds for 12 full days. Now, the other thing that I will say is that this is 3,570 calories. I am a six foot one, 235, 240 pound man, depending on the day of the week. I do not like to skimp on food in the backcountry. Any variable or any excuse that you can delete from your repertoire, the better off you are. And I think people try and go hyper light with their food, like, oh, look, I'm only taking a pound per day. I'm only taking 2,200 calories per day. Okay, fantastic. But the next time you decide to not hike over that next ridge, how sure are you, you are making a wise decision that is in the best interest of the hunt? Or is it possible your mind is tricking you because you haven't fed it enough calories and you're tired and you're cold and doubt is creeping into your mind and you're gonna make a poor decision because you were too weak and too lazy to carry enough food to fuel you on the hunt. So while I'm not recommending everybody carry 3,600 calories, I would do like a basic basal metabolic rate calculation and, and see what you can get away with. You will never carry enough food to completely replace the calories you're gonna burn on a hunt. But if you can be in that 70 to 80% range, like if I'm gonna burn 5,000 and bring 3,600, that would be fantastic. If you're gonna burn 4,000 and bring 2,800, okay, fantastic. But based on your size, how much lean mass you're carrying, and how efficient you are at hiking in the backcountry, you should be able to have a rough idea of what you can get, get away with. But if you're just getting into this, I would err on the side of caution and bring a little more food and then experiment. Like how much can I have left at the end of the day and still feel as if I was high energy and willing to go next ridge, next ridge, next ridge all damn day. Okay. 
clearly feeling a little ranty tonight, but we will try and keep things on track. So let's get into the actual components of this. So let's start with the breakfast. So I do a do-it-yourself breakfast. So this is two scoops of whey isolate protein, two ounces of a crunchy cereal. There's this new Cheerios that came out that has like oats and honey and some cinnamon in it that is fantastic. And then one ounce of dried cranberries. So the macros on this, obviously the protein it weighs 60 grams, one gram of fat, four grams of carbs, 54 grams of protein. The cereal weighs 56 grams, has five grams of fat, 42 grams of carbs, four grams of protein, and the cranberries weigh 30 grams, have zero grams of fat, 25 grams of carbs, and zero grams of protein. So altogether, this weighs 146 grams. It has six grams of fat, 71 grams of carbohydrates, and 58 grams of protein for a total of 560 calories. Now the one note I'm going to make is that I highly recommend you use a high grade whey protein isolate. Number one, it's gonna mix way quicker when you add water into this and you're not gonna get that clumpy, chalky, gross, you know, protein concentrate blend horse shit. Number two, it's gonna be way easier to digest. Isolate digests much faster than a concentrate and sometimes your stomach's not in the best spot Spot when you're on a long backcountry hunt. So everything that you can do to aid digestion, keep those bowel movements nice and clean, I highly recommend. So, you know, don't penny pinch on the protein isolate. My favorite is uh, All Max Isoflex. I'm in Canada. All Max has really good Canadian distribution, so it's like relatively affordable. I don't really care what brand it is, but buy a high grade protein isolate. Highly recommend it. Now, if anybody is interested in a detailed breakdown of all the macros, this spreadsheet will be available for download for Mindful Reviews members. So if you wanna go join mindful-reviews.com. All the spreadsheets from all my reviews are there for download for all the members. Up next, what do we got for lunch? So we're gonna go the, through the three main meals, then we're gonna get into the snacks. Now, I've been running Green Belly Meals for, I don't even know how long, four, five years now. I love these things. There are more, you know, interesting things you can take for lunch, but I like things that are easy and practical. I buy cases of these at the beginning of the year. They're always in my gear locker. In fact, there's a gigantic box over there with like 60 of these in it. Every time I get ready for a hunt, they're sitting there, they last for years, there's never any problems. So the macros on this bad boy weighs 155 grams, 24 fat, 95 carbs, and 17 grams of protein. So really, really good calorically dense lunch, 650 calories altogether. Okay, up next, we're gonna go with a peak refuel dinner. Now, before I get into the macros, I field strip all my dinners, and I usually do it at the beginning of the season. So I open up the kind of mylar bag that it comes in. I remove that little oxygen package that keeps it dry. That weighs almost an ounce as is. And then I put it in here. I save almost two ounces by removing that pack and getting rid of the mylar package. Now, if you're gonna pack 12 of these, you have just saved 24 ounces. So that's 1.5 pounds. Now. If I told you some of the things I've spent money on and how much money I've spent to try and shave 1.5 pounds off of my pack weight, I would hope to God my wife doesn't watch this video if I shared that information. So to be able to shave that amount of weight by just simply putting your, your, your dinners in a vacuum sealed bag, uh, it, it, it's a pretty easy way to save in a pound and a half and you're not sacrificing anything. Now, I don't have them on hand right now, but I use these two small clips. So when I wanna boil this, I'll boil water, I cut the top off, open it up, pour the boiling water in, fold it over a couple times like the top of a dry bag, and then I have these, you know those clips like you'd put on the top of a bag of potato chips after you opened it, but the metal ones that you used to use as binder clips when you were in school, that's what I use. Pop two of those, leave it sit for 10 minutes, Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. In addition to that, I also add two scoops of MCT powder. 
I don't really care what kind you buy. This was cheap on Amazon. So the macros for this are one scoop is 10 grams. There's six grams of fat and three grams of carbohydrates. Most of those, it's three grams of fiber. There's no sugar in this product. So by putting two scoops of this, I add 20 grams per meal, but I'm adding 12 grams of fat. Now that's an additional 120 calories altogether with the carbohydrates and the fat. So to get 120 calories out of only an additional 20 grams, and you don't even taste it. If anything, it makes the meal like a little more rich. It doesn't make it greasy, doesn't make it anything. And you can kind of see it just right here. It takes up no space at all. Um, so the final macros on this, if we look at just the peak refuel, weighs 190 grams, 69 fat, 63 carb, 52 protein. The extra fat is 20 grams, 12 grams fat, six carb, zero protein, 120 total. So that's gonna give me 1,210 calories for dinner. So that's a nice, big, calorically dense dinner. Okay, up next, I'm gonna introduce one of the new snacks that I just started testing out for this year. And it's actually a combination of two products. So I have wanted to add some type of nut butter to my meal plan for a while, but I'm gonna be honest. I try and only put things in my meals, in my meal plan, in my kind of package, that I'm actually gonna enjoy eating. Like I want every time I have something, it to be like a little bright spot in the day. And the, the idea of just like squeezing this shit into my mouth is not particularly appetizing to me. I like texture in my food. So this year when I was prepping for a bodybuilding show, my coach had me the day of the show, like to peak for the stage, go buy Rice Krispie treats, peanut butter and honey. And about once every hour, I had to take a Rice Krispie treat, put peanut butter and a squirt of honey and eat it. It's basically like really fast acting carbohydrates with a little bit of fat to kind of help you sustain that, that pump. And the idea is so you get a good pump to go on stage. But I loved the flavor of the Rice Krispie treat with the peanut butter so much. When it came time to plan for hunting season, I was like, oh, I finally found the perfect combo. I can take the Rice Krispie treat, I can put the peanut butter on and eat it together. I am telling you, man, outstanding. This is easily like the highlight of my day. I'll save it for like the middle of the hike or just some time during the day when I know I need that little pick me up. And I'm kind of like, I love this shit, man. This is probably the favorite thing I have in my meal plan right now. So let's go over the macros for this. The Rice Krispie snack first. So it weighs 22 grams, 2.5 grams of fat, 17 carb, one protein. The trail butter weighs 33 grams, 17 grams of fat, eight grams of carb, and five grams of protein. Together, 290 calories. So this is where you see the Rice Krispie Treat doesn't weigh very much, has a good kind of boost of carbs, but its overall caloric content is not that high. It's only 90 calories. Now, the trail butter only weighs 10 grams more but because it's predominantly comprised of fats, it actually has twice the caloric density of the Rice Krispie snack. And the reason I like to put these together is that you get that little hit of the carb from the Rice Krispie snack, but then the slow digesting element of the fats kind of sustain that energy burn for you and you don't get this like spike and crash immediately afterwards. Highly recommend this combo. Up next, carb gummies. Now this is going to be one of my favorite tips I'm going to give you guys this year. Stop buying expensive cliff blocks. Any type of gel or, you know, carb gummies, all that shit that's super expensive at MEC and REI and on all the online stores. It's all the same shit. There's no magic sugar. It's all just sugar. So I did the math because I actually ran out. I used to buy these Cliff gummies, super delicious, these pomegranate energy chews. And I ran out of them one year. And so I was upstairs and I was going through my kids' snacks and I found these Welch's chews. And I started looking at the macros and I was like, holy shit, man. These are the same as the Cliff bars, except these are literally pennies a pack. 
to get the same amount of cliff shots in these is like three or four dollars. This is like 25 cents. So go buy the big monster Costco box of these Welch's gummies. And then, yeah, the packs aren't as big. You got to put in two packs to equal one pack of the cliff blocks. But I love these things, man. Super delicious and uh, just a quick hit of almost pure carbs. So if we put these two things together, weighs 44 grams, zero fat, 32 carbs, and two grams of protein for a total of 140 calories. Okay, now let's go to my favorite protein bar. I've been trying a lot of protein bars lately. Um, these ones are put out by Raw. They're a supplement company out of the States. I don't really care what you use, but I prefer whole food based protein bars as opposed to those like with the soy protein and a bunch of chemicals in it. And if I read the ingredients in this, dates, peanuts, honey, egg white protein, non-fat milk powder, cocoa powder, sea salt. That's it. Now, if we look at the macros on this, it weighs 70 grams, seven grams of fat, 37 carb, and 13 protein. So this is the other reason why I like to go protein heavy in my breakfast and my dinner. I have 50 grams in both those meals because while this is called a protein bar, I kind of think a bar should have closer to 20, 30 grams of protein. Like it should be the dominant macro if you're gonna call it a protein bar. I would call this closer to like a meal replacement bar, but it's delicious. It does have a significant amount of protein and it's a great source of carbs and fat. Now the next thing which I don't have sitting here in front of me because they're actually in this freezer behind me and I'm not taking them out till next week is elk sticks. So I made my own elk pepperoni sticks, cut the meats to be about this long. They weigh 55 grams, they have 20 grams of fat, four grams of carbs and 15 grams of protein for a total of 240 calories. The last thing I throw in here and I'll be honest, I consider these freebies. I don't weigh them, I don't know what the macros are. These are Werther's Originals. I love these things. I just, I used to do Jolly Ranchers, but to be honest, I just don't like them as much. I take two Werther's and I just throw them in each bag and I kind of forget they're there. Then when I'm hungry, but it's not really time for another snack or if I'm glassing and I just want something to occupy my mind, I throw in a Werther's, bit of a time killer. Uh, super delicious and a little hit of sugar. So they probably, that's an extra, who knows man, 15, 20 grams in the bag, I don't, I don't count it. But it's also a little bit of extra carbohydrates. Now, for coffee, I'm still bringing four Starbucks Via Packs. It's the most practical and affordable option for me as a Canadian. I've tried some other stuff. I keep coming back to the Starbucks Via. I know some of you are gonna hate on that. I don't really care. This works for me. I like really, really strong dark coffee. But I did something very interesting this year. While I traditionally drink my coffee black, this stuff can be kind of acidic. And I usually put two of these packets in with 400 mils of water and it's a pretty intense coffee to drink in the morning. So I actually found this product by ANS Performance. I'm not linked with these guys at all and you can find multiple other products on the market that have the same macros and kind of flavor ingredients as this. This is just the one I found for cheap on Amazon. This is Keto Mate. It is a coffee creamer that's made out of fat. Now this particular one is caramel macchiato flavor. I take one scoop of this per day, it weighs 15 grams, has a total of 110 calories, 10 grams of fat, three grams of carb, one gram of protein. And what I do is I put half of this in my morning coffee, and then if I have some other coffees throughout the day, I'll put half of what's left in with one scoop. I basically use a quarter of this package per one of these um, Starbucks Vias. I tried using more and the flavoring was a bit too intense. But here's another example of how you can increase the caloric density of your meal plan by adding fats in kind of an interesting way. And it's a pure fat. It's primarily coconut oil powder, which is made up mostly of medium chain triglycerides, which is a fat that digests very quickly and provides energy to you much quicker. It's also been shown, MCT has been shown to have cognitive benefits. So maybe it'll help you think a little bit sharper. You remember when that bulletproof coffee and that fat kind of coffee was very popular, butter coffee, like a couple years ago. That was the whole principle behind that. MCT oil 
or uh, ghee butter in your coffee in the morning with just a black coffee and then you were just having a pure fat with pure caffeine and there was shown to be some cognitive benefits to having that first thing in the morning. So I buy this, I put it in these little Ziploc baggies, just a little bit of extra fat, increases the caloric density of the plan, doesn't increase my overall weight by that much. Then I was thinking I'd really like to have a hot drink at night because lots of times you get back to camp, you've had your meal, it's not quite ready for bedtime yet, and you just like to chill out and relax a little bit. I don't want to have a coffee because it's too late at night, but you've been on the side of a mountain all day, your throat could be a little bit sore, maybe your nose is plugged up from the dust and what have you, maybe you've been baked in the sun all day, who knows. I wanted a nice hot drink, so I thought to myself, okay, here's another opportunity to add some fats in like a more creative way. So I found this stuff, also put out by ANS. Again, don't care what you buy. Also primarily MCT oil. It's called Keto Coco, and it's basically a fat-based hot chocolate. So one scoop, which fits right here in this bag, weighs 16 grams. It's 110 calories, 10 grams of fat, three grams of carbs, one gram of protein. The Keto Mate for the coffee and the Keto Cocoa product basically have identical macros. So again, I'm only adding an additional 16 grams to my pack, but I'm adding 110 calories. So that is everything. Now from the top, my total one day package is 766 grams, 106 grams of fat, 340 grams of carbohydrates, and 165 grams of protein for a total of 3,570 calories. Now again, unless you are the same shape, size, and similar activity level to myself, I'm not saying copy this meal plan specifically. What I was hoping to do is provide you with a set of principles and some example foods to choose from so you could go and tailor your own kind of meal plan. For example, if you're you know significantly smaller than I am, I'd cut the breakfast in half. I'd go one scoop of protein, one ounce of cereal, and half an ounce of dried cranberries. If you wanted to get rid of it some other way, there's kind of three big snacks per day. You got the meal replacement bar, the two packs of gummies, and the kind of Rice Krispie Treat peanut butter combo. You could take one of those, you could take two of those, you could take all three of those. Also, 650 calories is pretty significant for lunch you could take those meal to go bars and split them in half and you could have 325 calories one day and 325 calories the next day in fact how this normally breaks out for me is that i will spread those two halves of the meal to go bar out by a couple hours just because i like to have something to do during the day and i like to try and eat something every you know kind of like 90 to 120 minutes throughout the day so that i have a constant source of fuel and i'm not spiking my blood sugar okay so let's recap some of the important information if you have not already downloaded the backcountry meal planning guide go to the link in the description download that that's going to provide you some more context for planning your own meals remember there's two example meal plans much similar to this in the back of that also, quick reminder, if you want to participate in that raffle, mindful-reviews.com, ultimate ultralight solo sleep system, only a few tickets left. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you want to you know, list some of your own example foods that you found have worked really well for you, or if you have some other interesting hacks that you've done that kind of make your pack lighter while still increasing caloric density, I'd love to hear that. And I'm sure other people would benefit from that knowledge as well. As usual, if you could help bump this content up in the algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it. Like, comment, share, subscribe, anything. Hunting content doesn't generally get pushed too hard by YouTube. So anything you guys could do, I would really appreciate it. And as always, until next time, thank you for tuning in.